are. Hello. Good Hello. morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. It kind of feels like morning. I feel like this day didn't happen. It kind of felt like Tuesday all day today. I'm not kidding you. I had to keep like reminding really? myself it's Friday. You have something to do. It's well, Friday. that was me yesterday. I kept thinking yesterday was Friday, uh, but it wasn't. And I kept thinking, oh, I have to do this. No, I don't have to do the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking uh, all day, it's Tuesday. It's like, when is it going to be the weekend? And I'm like, it is. What's wrong yeah. with you? Everybody's um, working for the, the weekend. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we were just talking uh, to fill in, you, fill you in. Uh, we were just talking. Oh, welcome to CNC and Conversation. Oh, yeah. We never do that. We, we always forget to, to mention the name welcome of the show, show. Which is funny because I don't think it's on our thing either is it <laughs> our, our frame yeah we'll tell rich to put it on there rich morales <laughs> yeah God that way when, when we forget rich it's morales there. we're the best always yes. the best yes. um we were just talking about escaping how much we would love to go to mexico and and have some nice fish tacos and that uh is probably not a reality for quite a while not for a while no yeah, my my family down there is uh is uh saying it's Pretty pretty bad. Actually, yeah. my niece, my niece actually had COVID down there. Did she really? Uh -huh. I didn't know that. She did. Uh, yeah, she did because she works for a company that um, the boss just really didn't care um, and made them go into the office still when everything was hitting at the height. Uh, oh. And still, she's still having to go into the office. She only was able to take off because she was sick. Um, and so she ended up with COVID and she lives in a, you know, a not so big apartment with my brother and my nephew and, and my brother's mom. Hey, Richard Malmos. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Richard. Um, uh, oh my God. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah. She's okay. She's, she's healthy. And that, uh, as far as I know, nobody else ended up getting it, which is surprising because they are in closed quarters, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's nuts. So I don't think our dreams of heading to Mexico for fish tacos are, going to be a reality for quite a while no but how amazing is it going to be yeah. when we oh, can you, do that we're gonna yeah. be so grateful for that we're gonna be so grateful for that luxury i'm gonna put it's gonna be it's true oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put this comment up hi tom, hi, tom bardos <laughs> that's yeah, right exactly that's exactly what i thought so thank you for that yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, I, I mean our numbers in general are going back up again so like everybody please Please be vigilant. I know that it's tough. It's really tough, but yeah. wear the masks, wash your hands. If you don't have to go out, don't. I mean, we live depression style era. Like we're bartering and we're we are. like, we're saying like, <laughs> I, I have this, if you got this, you know, like yeah. do that, like in your own little clusters. Your bubbles. Our little bubbles are yeah. Yeah, our pods, as we like to call them. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Tom, you're famous. Thank you for joining <laughs> Um uh, Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just I was just trying to think of like positive things to start this show with or whatever, because of course. We yeah. Start. Oh, right. It's hard. Um, well, OK. Fish tacos are positive. I'm sure there's somewhere around here. If anybody could recommend a great fish taco place in L.A. Yeah, I know, I know that I have a lot of friends who are going to be like, what do you mean? Of course, you have to come here. And so please, please just have at it. Own. You're Mexican. Just do it. <laughs> That's true. I could make my own. <laughs> Except I can't I can't cook fish in the house. My daughter will kill me. She's a vegetarian. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Vegetarian. That's right. She that smell will never come out. So no. Um also, also I'm not so good at cooking fish. Really? Well, first, first I don't have a lot of experience. Oh, okay. Well. Um, I just want to bring up Jumbo's clown room again. <laughs> You're really obsessed with Jumbo's clown room. Um I'm obsessed well, tell, with tell, tell, I'm, I'm just obsessed with the things like it. Yeah, so last week there was an article about Jumbo's Clown Room and how they're doing their virtual shows and it's so much better because they could, you know, keep all the money for themselves and not have to, you know, pay out other people in the yeah. in the club and then they're also, you know, donating a lot of money to some great organ organizations. So tomorrow's show, do you know what tomorrow's show is? And I still haven't seen what? one yet. Oh, why aren't we watching it? I don't know, we should. It's like a 3-hour show, like Oh, that's why. <laughs> I mean, what else are we gonna do? But yeah, um, tomorrow's yeah. show is uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah. And I was like, if there's any show that we should that, be a part yeah. of. Yeah. Why, why, why aren't we, why haven't we jumped on that? I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's pretty great. I love, I love that they're doing this. Um, yes. And I hope they keep doing it even after. Um, yeah. I mean, and granted, I have not reached out at all or like done any social media to say, Hey, if you want us to host your show, but I'm going <laughs> to put it out there for anybody has any connections to. Yeah. With jumbos. Yeah. Ginger. Or <laughs> ginger. Hey, Ginger. If you're watching, I think she just had a birthday. No, because I follow them on Instagram now. <laughs> I'm very obsessed. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> and um, then also, I watched what? an amazing movie, and I have to tell everybody about this because I texted you okay. last night. I was sobbing. Yeah. My octopus teacher. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm hearing that that is a beautiful, beautiful. I film. I did not expect it to affect mm -hmm. me so deeply. I was hoping just for something like kind of beautiful and educational, and I was just wrecked totally oh, wrecked i love it's that so, it's so special and sweet and heartbreaking i mean it's like you know it's life it's like you see all the cycles of life in this relationship which is and and this octopus she's so sweet now i i've oh. been collecting kittens during this past couple yeah, of weeks past yeah, couple months are you gonna start collecting octopus octopi I might. I might. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you know, I have an octo octopus experience, actually. Um, hi, Pammy. Hi, joining us. She agrees. Yeah. I, I, I think she's saying about the, the film. Um, so good. We were, uh, Dave and I and and uh, uh, Alina and whoever else. I don't know. <laughs> that one. Some some family. Know. Some family people. We were obsessed. <laughs> we went down to, we were able to get sort of a behind the scenes tour uh, uh, at the Scripps Aquarium. Um, mm. and, uh, they had an octopus in a, um, in, in a tank and the, the, the guide was like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and put your arm in there. Go ahead. Um, I was like, really? Was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. She's really friendly. She's really sweet. So I put my arm in this tank. She immediately wraps her tentacles around my arm and starts pulling me, pulling me pulling me like uh, to go into the tank. I was like, uh, now what do I do? She's like, just relax. I'm like, she's pulling me into this tank. And she's like, yeah, she, she, she thinks it's pretty funny. I was like, oh, does she? Does she? Yeah. Yeah. That was the craziest thing. Like, I mean, I knew they were one of the smartest creatures, you know, on the planet, but I just had no idea how sensitive and I, I don't know, like there, there was just more, it was more complex than I, than I had expected or whatever. There is yeah. a shot of her, this octopus just playing. Aww. Like you think she's hunting at first, but there's no like folk. And I'm not going to ruin it. Just watch yeah, it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, oh, yeah. Also, I, 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 the other thing that I think has been great um, this week and, and previous weeks, we've been watching these fundraisers. Mm. Um, and this week we got to see the, um, the spinal well, I saw tap. Two. Yeah. Yeah. You saw two, but the spinal tap, one uh so it's these reunions oh that was amazing if you can so find it online fun. it was really fun but um yeah if you're inclined if you're so inclined there are several fundraisers going on where they're doing these reunions and it's been so much fun to watch these things um and it's you know people just being themselves so there's none of that like i'm a celebrity and i am yeah. above you we're all in the same boat and they all have shitty you know technology and it's, yep. <laughs> you know it's, yep. it's just like this yep Absolutely. Um, um, but anyway, um, that's, I just wanted to put that out there. That's, that's a lot of fun and it's for a good cause. So, so go find some of those. Yeah. Um, but, um, <laughs> oh, oh, Pammy was saying that we should be on the version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> yes. She saw Newport. Yes. That's where we used to go. Newport beach to go see the midnight show of that. Um, Hey, I'll be magenta any day of the week. <laughs> Everybody wants to be magenta. I know. Well, I can't tap. <laughs> I can't tap. Well, neither can I. <laughs> um, anyway, we should get on with it and tell everybody who our excellent guest is if they haven't decided to read if it on our train yet. Overlay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have Rob Zabrecki, who is, who is an amazing magician, musician, uh, writer, turns out. We're going to find out all about this. We're going to add Rob in right now. Here we go. Hi, Hello. Rob. Hello. Hey Rob. Claudia, greetings. How are you? Hi. Doing all right. How are you guys? <laughs> well, you know, we're here. That's good. Yes. We're good. Yes. yes. This is good. We're happy that you're here. 
when we do these shows, it's sort of like it, it sort of a, is our highlight of the week, I think, for all of us. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's been. Oh, no. Thank you for, for coming. Um, and I know we both are digging your room behind you. It's. Uh, I know. It looks very cool. It's very awesome. It's a parlor. It's a tr it's a proper parlor is what it is. Uh, yeah, it kind of is actually. I do a lot of working here and, you know, decided to make it a nice space that felt like performance, livable, you know, world that kind of felt comfortable spending lots and lots of time in. So, yeah, uh, I feel like it's comfortable for me. Nice. Um, and so how is, uh, how is the quarantine? How's the pandemic been treating you? Oh, it's been great. I'm not used to being home so much, you know? Yeah. So it's been a real uh, lesson slash just, just everyday learning how to make things work at home. But there's mm -hmm. been some, some silver lining to that. I've been doing some writing and, and doing things at home that I wasn't doing before. I've learned a couple of new um some couple of new skills and um, reading some some books that are interesting. Yeah, what are you what are you reading? Sorry, Claudia. Uh, well, uh, a couple of things. One, actually, I brought it I brought it out to share with everybody. Um, every fall, I like to read this little this little gem of a book right here called The Magic Box, and I'll hold it up so you can see it. And it's written. There, there's two authors. One is uh, Joseph Pinataro, and the second is Gorman uh, Leoberte. And I think they're from Los Angeles. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know which one, which one was the writer who did the graphics because they're both credited as, as writers and producers of the book. But it's just got this beautiful general um, philosophy about life mixed with these, these graphics um, that I wrote cut and paste. The book was from it was published in 1970. Oh, wow. So oh, wow. One says, uh, life is magic. Death is magic. Only nothing is not magic. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like pre Photoshop uh, graphics. Some of them are really colorful. And each page is just loaded with, with philosophy and, and small, you know, idioms that, that really um, subscribe to my wow. philosophy and sort of way of life. I love this one. Look Very cool. Page. You are the wizard of everything. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I, I mean, love that. With that, and it's really something. So, um, they they created four, one for each season. This is this is the fall in the magic box, and just the cover alone is just it's just really. Uh, the, I was going to com comment on the cover. I love that cover. Uh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Um, so this is the fall one, and then um, the peace box. I think this is winter, and it's very very similar style. And um, there's you know, there's one for uh, spring and summer as well. But I love oh, these books cool. so much, and uh, I also I also try to keep them out to kind of you know. They're either they're short and easy reads. Yeah. Um, oh, that's oh, good. I like that. <laughs> a deeper read. Uh, I'm short and so, easy too. <laughs> well, we you wouldn't that. like this book right here. Uh, the <laughs> uh, is an amazing uh, tale of a of a spirit medium back in the 1920s. Ooh. Um, and her name was Marjorie. And she, ah. was, she was teaching these seances uh, at the height of the, the spiritualist movement in the 1920s. Um, what made her a little bit different was she would sometimes do them in the nude to try to seduce uh, the people that came to her seances, uh, but was ultimately busted by Harry Houdini, the master magician himself, who, who hated these spiritualists because they were mostly, all of them were cons and crooks who were trying to you know, take people from, from, their, uh, from their, away from their, their money to contact their dearly departed uh, friends and family. So yeah. It's a great story about her. And this oh, one, that's awesome. visually, and I'm sorry, that one's called The Witch? The, the Witch of Lime Street, yeah. Oh, the Witch of Lime Street, okay. Of Lime Street, yeah, she lived on, on, on Lime Street uh, in Boston. And um, the, the great thing about this book is it has a glow-in-the-dark uh, book jacket. Um, typically, you know, they put a book jacket in the trash. I hate book jackets. But this one, uh, I discovered by accident that, that it glows in the dark. And it, since is, it's, it's, I think it's the only book in my library that has jacket yeah i always take off the book really? jackets too i can't stand yeah. it depends it depends yeah. if it's a good one i i, I like it but yeah no I, I i love the the natural covers on them the the, the fabric yeah. you know yeah 
um, that's that's cool. Those are some. Those look like some good reads. I have to. Um, I'm gonna go look for those. And the yeah, covers the, are great. And the, just buy it for the cover. Uh, but the, yeah, the book of Lime Tree is a deep dive into the world of you know Houdini and sort of magic in the world, of course, in the 1920s. So it's it's really great, and it's also of the of the um, the essence of the uh, you know October coming into the fall. They're really kind yes. Of, oh yeah. We're, we're, we have a hundred degree heat out in, in LA. <laughs> Yes. I like to combine go to you know places where there's there's rich sunsets and uh, you know the leaves are falling off the streets, which is really isn't true. Yeah, um, my poor daughter grew up here, and um, not my poor daughter, but you know <laughs> she she has never had that experience of of the seasons, you know, changing seasons. So you know when we drive down the street and she starts to see some you know two leaves are turning on a tree, she's like, oh my god, it's fall, you know. It's um, <laughs> it's quite sad. <laughs> it's quite sad. And and usually yeah. it's really just burnt leaves from the heat. Oh. Yeah. And it's not snow. It's ash. It's it's ash. We fire. get ash. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. Um. And and have you uh, have you been um, doing anything in particular um, aside from reading these awesome well, books? I, um, I, I acquired a new skill. Um. From my from my times of, of the days when I was traveling, um, occasionally I would stay at a three, four, or on a, on a nice occasion a five star hotel. And um, it was during one of those visits that uh, I was in the bathroom when I discovered that the, the toilet paper had a had a little fold to to the edge. You know, the, the, yes, the fold up the edges, and there was this this beautiful point. You know, yeah, so, yeah. I, I um, started to leave this as my trademark wherever I'd stay. Even if the hotel didn't have it, I would leave that little point as my, this, this was my stamp of being there. <laughs> and um, when I came back to, to LA, uh, I, I made it a habit to, to do it at home. And um, yeah, I have some examples of, you know, this is, if you don't know what it looks like, the, the, the real simple fold you see is very simple. It's just taking the, the ends you see right there of any, and you yes. Paper. And very pleasant. Yeah, it's very pleasant. And you fold up the corners just like that, right in the middle. And you have this nice sharp this little point. You know what it says yeah. to me? Let's get hmm. the day going. Let's move this. You see? <laughs> so this is, it really spoke to me. You know, yeah. It's, it's, okay. It's, and I took it one step further. I thought, well, at that point, it looks so great. If you fold it up again, you can get a much sharper point. You see that? Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's more okay. dramatic. It's got an Edwardian sort of feel to it. Uh, I'll bring mm -hmm. it up a little bit. Yeah. See it. And also Very dramatic. A man's, you know, a, a necktie, the end of a, of a necktie. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. As you can see, I like, I like sharp corners with things, long, sharp corners. I'm naturally just attracted to them. I don't know why, but I am. Angular. 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 Yeah. But, so that yeah. led to, um, to, to the imagination of, of, of things that are out there in the world. You know, it's, it's been so hot outside. I haven't been able to garden as much as I like to. So I, I found a way to create um, like this. You see, it's like a nice little flower. Oh, how oh very pretty. Yeah. yeah. See that? Yeah. Lovely. It's a nice yeah. flower. That's yeah. lovely. So I like to leave that in the restroom as a as a little token of being there sometimes. Will you come over to my house? I know. I want you to <laughs> make my house seem fancy. Just come use the restroom. <laughs> if you invite me over and I use the restroom, I, I, might, I, might, leave you, I might leave a gift. This, this will yes. tell you. Oh, I can't wait. There. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and then I like, to, and then I'll, there's a couple more. Um, I like to think about the the summer months, and of course, there's there's this one here. This this little this little ship. You see, you see that little, that little oh boat? oh yeah, yeah. Oh, my oh my god, oh my god. Myself, just floating out there in the ocean. You know, on a nice cool day. You know, not a care in the world there, and just floating around. <laughs> and, ooh, I'm stuck in COVID. You know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we were talking about escapes earlier, so that's that's great. That's a good way to escape. Now, I, I realize this is all origami, but taking this this idea one step further, I, I realized recently that for the for the Halloween times, you can create a nice little <laughs> nice little. It looks like the Wolfman. See that like the Oh wolf my man. gosh! Yeah, oh, that is I, hilarious. I like that. I like that one. It's yeah. Not, there, I've broken. I've broken the, the rules of origami. Yeah, but I've torn some tears. 
and you go in the bathroom, you get a little fright, you know, like Ron Chaney. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then and somebody that, has to wipe with that. <laughs> like a yeah. full hand. Ultimately, yeah, or you can cut, I, I cut with scissors, you see, oh. and make it with your hand, you see. That's, again, oh, yeah. Rules, you know, breaking, okay. I'm, I'm trying to try to, But you know, really, Rob, are there any rules? It is toilet paper origami. You're right. Toilet paper um, crafts, I would say. Crafts, favorite, yes. Probably um, a little bit of a, a, a sculpting idea where I take a, a piece of toilet paper like so, and mm -hmm. if I just give it the proper twist, and this might it's gonna take me just a moment, I can okay. start imagining who I might make uh, as far as a, a, a person or a figure. If I can get this just right, this takes just a, a little bit of time. If I squeeze it just right, if I can pinch that just right, it might be hard to see in the camera, but here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna bring that nice and close. But this is uh, Amelia Earhart. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see her there? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. She's wearing a dress, and I realize she mostly wore pants. But mm -hmm. I think, I think well, really getting the of it. And, and when, by the time COVID is over, I will be able to have a whole fleet you know, of my favorite uh, pop culture figures and, and people of that. Oh, show. I think that so, deserves a book, like coffee table book. So, are you the reason why we didn't have toilet paper for the first part of COVID? <laughs> uh, me, I did. I, it, it took me a long time to get there. So, uh, okay. <laughs> thanks a lot, Rob. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's so fun! Oh that my god, fun. I I didn't. I never even thought about making toilet paper origami or crafts crafts at all. Close closest well, I've gotten is at a wedding, a bridal shower, and having to make a wedding dress out of toilet paper. That's it. Maybe the conversation will open up a spark some, some creativity next time you're you're Yeah. I did something similar as a child. So I was homeschooled. I'll, I'm gonna put this out there before I tell the story. <laughs> because mm -hmm. until I was in high school. Uh but we would play garage sale. Like that was one of our <laughs> fun things to do is to play garage sale. And we put things out that we didn't intend to sell at all in the front yard. And I would make these flowers out of, of out of tissue paper. So I put a bobby pin in them and then fluff them up and make little flowers. And people would buy them. So I kept doing it. Wow. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. It was great. It's like these <laughs> idiots. <laughs> what city were you living in? I, I must ask. Huh? Where where did this take place? Dallas, Texas. Ah, there you go. In the, 80s, in the 80s. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible segue, but speaking of the 80s, <laughs> we have been reading your book. Oh, my which gosh. Is, I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it off right now. Oh, yeah. Strange Cures. This is Rob's book. He wrote this himself. Like, that alone is impressive to me that you wrote, like, a book. <laughs> like, enough. Like, that's impressive enough. Um, but it is so engaging, this book. Like, yeah. It's so candid. I, it's so much fun. It's so tragic. It's. Yeah. Tragic. Right. I mean, like right out the gate, I was just, you know, like I was like, I, 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 I'm, I've had a really hard time. I'm a, I'm an avid reader, but I've had a really hard time reading during quarantine. Like my focus is just not there. It's just it, uh, for, for whatever reason. But I've tried. I've tried to get back on track in the last couple of months. But your book has been like it's so fascinating to me. But I mm -hmm. think it's just great because, like, what you were saying, like, it's just it is so funny. It's 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 so sad at the same time. It, I mean, it like it's just life, and I think it's very relatable. Well, hey, thank you. As a girl coming from Dallas, Texas, in the '80s, that uh, that that, that <laughs> me. I mean, uh, well, you know, I, I it did take me a long time to do it. It was it was no quick, you know, thing that I just threw together. So every time I look at it or, or reflect on it, I, I realize that it was my biggest art project today. I, I learned toilet paper origami in a matter of, of say a few weeks. <laughs> you know, it didn't take as much time as, as Strange Cures, which was uh like about a ten or eleven year um project. Wow, um, really? 
actually a, um, a long, you know, arduous task. Um, yeah, I, just I can like, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I felt it was like one of those things where I, I just felt like if I can if I can get this thing finished and 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 have a a bound book to, to look at and reflect on, I can sort of move on. Like there was all these, th many of those stories were haunting. And unfortunately it didn't serve that purpose where I, I'm still at like, I think people are at their core are, are nostalgic or they're not, you know, they, they want to kind of go to that space that's warm and fuzzy or yeah. haunted by something in the past. And, and some people are like that and some people aren't. Um, yeah. and, and I'm one of them. So although I thought it was going to be like, oh, right, I'm just going to finish this and, and move on. Like, let's start the new chapters. Um, it's I still find myself reflecting on on so much of those. Well, I, I can't. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're so deeply personal. And I I mean, I, I think I probably find myself in the same camp as you. Like there are things that are just always going to be with you. And I don't know how as much as you like as much as I've gone to therapy or journaled or any of that, like mm -hmm. it still is, is in there and it's still something that there are things that I still ruminate on quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Same, same. I mean, I think, yeah. And I also, I think like, I mean, some of these stories, there's, they're just, I mean, it's, it's not only your story. It's a great, which is a, a really interesting, you know, incredible journey for you but it's also like the story of LA too like all your references mm -hmm. as somebody who grew up in Southern California I did not grow up in LA but I, I've been up here since the early 90s but um I used to come up here when I was younger too and all of, it's like a time capsule you know all along it's such a great document of LA and the you know being young in LA at those times and and what it meant and and sort of being on the fringe of you know, not being so mainstream, but being in the artistic world, um, which, you know, I only really got to experience once I moved up here and was in Silver Lake and all of that, you know, you, I was sort of at the tail end of all of that, but it's so, it was so great. It's so great for me to like, you know, the, the, the advent of Jabberjaw and, uh, you know, you're talking about vaginal Davis and, you know, it's like all these, these great, you know, sort of iconic, underbelly of LA yeah. stories, you know, yeah. which I, I love. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, um, I, and some of those, they're, they're the, in a handful of those chapters, I, I know I was in like a, a really amazing time and place. Like I felt like this is, there's a lot going on here to, mm -hmm. that I'm later going to reflect on in life. Like I, I think I knew it at the time that it was even sometime that it was going to be something you know special to, to behold. Yeah, I'm worth telling. I, yeah, it, like, it felt like yeah. In other words, it felt like it was. I, I had a story worth 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 telling. So, oh, yeah. absolutely. I I highly recommend this book. It's great. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I wanted to show. I do have a couple of pictures. I did not t t warn oh, okay. you about this, Rob, but I do have a couple of pictures. I'm going to share. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Do I have it ready to go? Application. I do. Okay. All right. So the first <laughs> one, which um, uh, sort of uh. We we covered this when you were on the podcast on the Don't Say with Paul and Dave podcast. Uh, Jackie pointed out, rightly so, that you were you really like. So this is this is Robbie Benson, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but look at that. What? <laughs> That's Rob Zabrecki. <laughs> Robbie Benson. Yeah. Rob Zabrecki. I'm showing you guys actually the <laughs> wrong one. It's I'm, but it's all right. Um, you're going to see my pages thing. Um, but yeah, so that's like, come on. And that's around the same time period too. So, so yeah. I can imagine like, you know, girls must've been like, Oh my God, <laughs> it's Rob. It's Robbie. I, I got girls and guys alike. Uh, like that. I look like Robbie Benson. Um, there was a, <laughs> There used to be a bunch of thrift stores on uh, on Lancashire Boulevard in the early '80s, and um, one of them, I, I it had a great name, Ragtime Cowboy. It was called Ragtime Cowboy. Oh yeah. And it was it was run by these these uh, sort of leather boy, you know, big rough and tough gay gay fellas, the big the big mustaches, and they were like, you know, kind of had their like almost village people vibe to to eat. There's a few of them. That <laughs> Very, very colorful characters, 
And they thought I was Robbie Benson when I'd go in there. They would they would look to each other and they'd say, Bobby, like do you have a cry on these, this pork pie hat and this, you know. And I don't know. <laughs> I was in Hollywood, near Hollywood. That's, I think they really had me pegged for him. And I never, you know, I didn't say anything. I was also kind of embarrassed by it. But um, looking back on it, that's a that's a pretty nice compliment. That's a yeah. very nice compliment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did they, they must, they must have given you good service. <laughs> just <enough>. um, <laughs> um, this is, I've got just a couple pictures from your band, Possum Dixon. Yeah. Which is was yeah yeah amazing that's a, yeah yeah that's al's bar um 1992 oh my god al's bar. Bar. yeah this is like i mean i think like nirvana had come up the year before before they'd gotten put up their first big record so it's kind of before the um explosion of alternative you know when that mm. when that became like a more of a, a mainstream or like indie rock became like a real term um yeah like floating in this weird atmosphere where there was sort of music going on in, in a lot of the nightclubs uh, and then hair metal on Sunset Strip. And we were really neither, you know, but there was, because we kind of had like a, a punk ethos, lean more towards the grunge uh, side of things. So we got to, you know, perform and, and mingle with lots of that that world um, at places like Al's Bar and Raji's. And, and, uh, mm. Al's, Al's Bar is no more. It's so sad. Al's, and this yeah. is the rest of your band, your bandmates. Yeah, yeah, your bandmates. Yeah, they are. And my partners in crime from from yeah late late eighties, early nineties, and guy on my far right, um, Celso Chavez was who I started the band with, and really was the heart and soul of the group. And um, unfortunately, he's he's not with us anymore. But without him, we, it was one of those things where like, but college, we're just gonna let's have a band and see if we can make this our lives. And it wasn't because we were a great band, that's for sure, but. We were. We just had this burning desire to like. We're going to do this, and we're going to find our sort of niche in this world. And um, I love it. It was great to have a, a friend at that time, like Celso, to go. Yeah, let's let's like let's do this. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 No, I, lo I love your stories about Celso in the in the book. It's um, mm -hmm. yeah. What a you know we all we all have that friend you know that yeah, I mean, that's, taking you know, us I, on adventures you know pushing you to the limits. I mean that's kind of what we you know did. did for each other, I think. Yeah, yeah. Not only, not always too smart in using common sense and logic, but uh, we have <laughs> yeah, well, that's part of the charm, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, ones, and then I, boring. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I, strange kid would be, a, would be a, a slow drag, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, and then one last one here of you oh, and Tommy, yeah. your gorgeous yep. wife. Yeah, that's my wife who. I think at that point was my girlfriend. We might have just got married, but I mean, Tommy changed my whole life when when I got uh, when I became a, a sober person, stopped using drugs and alcohol. That I, you know, spent a good had a good ten year run with. And once I decided I didn't want to do that and actually wanted to really be good at something, and and you know, uh, we we did the logical thing. We became magicians, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as you do. Yeah. You do. <laughs> There was Tommy to go. Oh, you know what? Okay, that's a, that's a. I d didn't think that was in a concept really, but yeah, let's let's make a world out of like our love for silent film and and then like experimental music and weird film music and stuff. And let's take all that stuff and put it into a magic act and and see what happens. And we did thirty shows. I mean, the thing I can say wow. about this picture is our press photo was way better than the actual act. <laughs> <laughs> And there are people that are alive that saw the act that would agree. Um, <laughs> and and it, wasn't, it wasn't that we were so terrible and that we just weren't like, we didn't have the training of magicians who were right. magicians. Well, kids. I was just going to say, when you were on the podcast, you told a great story about how you got started doing magic. Yeah, yeah. Would you mind yeah. telling telling us? I'm going to actually, I'll stop yeah. the screen. I mean, yeah, like I uh, I had zero interest in, in magic. It was not anything. I was a shy little little kid. And I mean, once when I was a, a, in grade school, I was brought on stage and Ronald McDonald came to our school to tell us about eating healthy and, and brought me on stage and did a magic trick and he poured evaporated milk into my head. And it was extremely mortifying, and I was embarrassed, and it was, just, it was kind of scarring. And, oh, you know, it just, it just didn't, it was something that really resonated with me. 
uh, and then there I am, 25, 26 years old, and my band Possum Nixon's in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. We're, we're doing the show that night at nightclub. And I'm walking around the afternoon after we load our gear into the club to sightsee, and uh, and I wander into a magic store for the simple reason that there was an air conditioner outside for no other reason. It could be a bakery or a women's shoe store, but I just like I just thought, oh, I'll go in there. And after wandering around and you know, loitering for ten minutes, I felt guilty for not buying something. And I really would have, you know, bought a, a, a pie or a, a shoe or something that you know make my 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 stay uh you know worthwhile for the, for the owner for letting me cruise around but i bought a, i bought a small magic trick the, the man who was working there performed a, a little trick where he put a, a silk uh, uh handkerchief into his fist and it vanished and it was unbelievable and i couldn't believe what happened and i bought it and i, I that night i went back to the club and I, I fumbled around with it and i kind of figured it out i forgot about it it was in my front pocket and then we're we're in a third song around midnight and Celso, a beloved guitar player, broke a string. And uh, I just remembered that this device in my pocket could vanish a small object. So rather than vanish that little green handkerchief, I said, hey, does anybody out there have a, a wrapped condom? And somebody else immediately throws one up on the stage and I picked it up and I very crudely put it in my fist while everybody's watching a couple hundred people and I vanished the thing and it was gone. And um, people went crazy. They went well, crazy. People liked it. They applauded. Um, <laughs> that's it. Went crazy. We're talking about '90s indie rockers, not not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, not, not that picky you know. about their magic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but very picky about their indie rock. Um, right. So, yes. so it worked. And then the next night we go to New York City. I'm like, guys, I'm gonna do that thing again. It was funny, and, and it's a good way to. You know, you guys tune up and I'll like, it'll give us a little, little thing to do. And I wasn't like a shtick person or like talking to the audience guy. I was not that person at all. Um, but it worked again. And I was, again, I was amazed. It, it all happened. I, another condom in the fist, it vanishes. We finish our tour and we, we drive 3,000 miles back to, to LA where I'm from. And uh, my girlfriend, Tommy, she, she is managing this nightclub, the Viper Room on Sunset Strip uh, at that time. Oh. Yeah. She, yeah, one of the, the one of the um, the bonuses of working in a nightclub, like as you get invited to go to the nightclubs, and in her case, she got invited to go to the Magic Castle, a private nightclub for magicians and their guests in Hollywood, a big Victorian mansion filled with magic. Legendary. Mm -hmm. legendary, absolutely legendary. Yeah, yeah, and so we got to go there together and have this experience of walking into this world that was unknown to us really i mean i know these couple i learned this one this one stupid trick it wasn't stupid but I, you know i realized that i have this one trick but i walk into this world where this is a subculture and it's an art form and like i was like i was a teenager discovering bands i just wanted to know about everything every magician who's that guy who's that guy what did he do vaudeville you know the whole idea of this, mm -hmm. this yeah. world, i just suddenly became like uh, of, of upset, madly obsessed. And uh, I just dove in head first and we, we put together that group from Clementine. And then yeah. she left that after about 30 shows and it became, uh, and it continued to write and produce for my magic character, but didn't want to be so much on stage and be in front of the camera. Although she's stunningly beautiful and could have been a great asset to magic. Yeah. She's, she's, she was even cooler than that. She's like, Nah, not interested. I'll be back. <laughs> but, uh, and she did. And, and um, over the next four years, I developed um, a character that started to gain some traction from partially because I figured out a way to present magic a little bit different than other magicians. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I kind of realized that I, I, had, a, I had a look of a, of a certain, uh, like a dark visage, you might say, that people go, oh, he mm -hmm. looks like a spooky magician. So I kind of almost embraced aspects of that and um boy before i knew it i was performing at magic castle and and uh i really just dove into that world and became i wove myself into the fabric of, of magic castle I, it was my i love it my life my desire and that was it up and running um and, uh, and that's that incredible that's how it started like the fact that you started magic that way is 
I, I'm sure very unusual that, the, you know, a story like that is extremely unusual. Um, and as Richard Malmos has commented, the beginning of a legend. I mean, you are, you're totally, you know, you are, as you said, woven into the fabric of the Magic Castle. Now you have won awards. I mean, you're very, you know, very prominent in that, that world. And um, yeah, and, I, and, so. I, and I love, and I, I do like, I, that's one of my favorite things about your, your show is your pacing. I love mm -hmm. it so much. Like I, you take your time and it's so interesting. And, and I, I, I also wanted to say this because we've all been stuck in quarantine and we're all, mm -hmm. you know, live theater people and we've been missing that. I just want to mm -hmm. say thank you for the show that you put on a couple yes. of years, a few weeks ago, because it was really a treat, you know, like it was really, we're trying to all adapt to these Zoom shows and stream yards and stuff, but it was really, it seemed theatrical and it, and we put it on the big screen and we had to watch both shows because we wanted to see like, the Sudeikis and the and the and the Jack sure. Black. We wanted to see both where where it went. So it was really nice. It was really a nice little. Oh, I feel like I'm I'm doing something again. Yeah. Is it um, is that available anywhere for people to see? It will be. Uh, eventually, it will be. It will be. Okay. Um, yeah. There's, there was a it was a three camera shoot. It was it was weird because it was in quarantine, but it was we did it on a soundstage uh, in mm -hmm. in Hollywood. So there were. I was wondering was about that. Yeah, there was a sizable cast and crew, very safe. I mean, it was shielded, masked, and it was distanced. And unless you were on camera, you know, COVID tested, we, 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 you know, you weren't, you weren't coming to that world. So it was, it was, it felt, it felt, it was, it was done properly. Um, but the fact that there was three cameras means that there was, they had to do some tweaking and adjusting. So I think in the days to come, there will be um, a, a nice version uh, that we'll have. You know, um, oh, great. Show. Yeah, That's exciting. Came on, and, um, Michael Carbonaro, uh, Puddles, Pity Party, mm -hmm. uh, the show. Yeah. Um, so it was, I got to, I got to, uh oh, here comes a special guest. That's my buddy Chase. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. He looks like my dog Falcor, only normal. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well, well, from what nice. I can tell, anyway. Yeah. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Just jumped in. Oh. <laughs> anyway, the answer is yes. We'll, we'll have, hopefully have a, a version of it that'll be available. Great. Well, we have a, a very short clip to show of yours, if you don't mind. We'll, um, I'm going to show that. It's I always assume I can get it going right. Okay. Yes, I'm doing that. It's always like this, Rob. Don't don't be upset. Okay. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I'm going to actually do this. Here we go. Magic Castle. <laughs> At the Magic Castle. That was great. Robbie Benson Sorry? goes to the Magic Castle. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> I haven't been in a while, and, and I was, it, it reminded me that when um, my friend, uh, a magician friend, said, So I had this, you know, he said, I had this idea that. Well, there it is. You just you come out of the earth. You know, the hand comes out of the dirt. And you're buried alive, and he describes this this opening. And I thought, oh my god, I have to do this. This is like you know, this is a uh, this is not maybe. This is like un, like if not do it tomorrow, I'm doing it the next day. Like it was just a must do. <laughs> not realizing that um, I think I've been buried in a uh, in a dirt lot, just in Silver Lake, in a gross abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, 
the weight of the dirt when it's on you is extremely uh, it's heavy. Claustrophobic. And, I couldn't do yeah, it. I couldn't. It was, it was really <laughs> disgusting. And I don't think I would do it today. Like, if, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad I did that a few years back and that's, so I got yeah. to get the clip. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I could not do that. That's exactly what I was thinking as you were like coming out of the I'm like, oh no, no, no. That would I would couldn't do it. My claustrophobia would kick in. I would be a mess. Um yeah. and yeah, it's a good idea not to say no. <laughs> yeah, it's okay yeah. to say no, everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Pammy says she'd love to see your magic act. Well, when when uh, the video is ready, uh the show is ready, uh we'll make yeah, sure we'll to post, post, post about yeah. that. For sure. And then, of course, if live acts ever happen again, we will make sure to, to um, well, we've we've been fortunate to have you on our show, both as a singer and as a magician. So we love yes. that. Hopefully that will happen again. But um, uh, but it's been so great to talk to you and, and find out so much great information about you and your life and 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 toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all here, you know? That's the thing. It's like everyone thinks it's, you know, it's <laughs> Well, now it's much more plentiful. You can find toilet paper, so have uh, at yeah. it. I actually have some stored in my closet. Like, I've got so much at this point. Oh, yeah. So if you want to, I mean, I've, I have enough. I find the, uh, the quilted northern ultra, ultra plush is the way to oh, go. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a stick to fly. Blend that just yeah. Always Co Costco, Costco. Mine's, yeah, mine's Costco. Mine's mine's Kirkland. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, 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 uh, it was it was really cool uh, chatting with you both, and uh, really fun. Likewise, really likewise. Yeah. Well, I, I uh, yeah. Well, hopefully you'll be back on our show, um, and uh, we will. We'd, we'd love to have you anytime. So it's great, great talking yeah. to you, Rob. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to. Um, Subscribe to us, please, on YouTube. Uh, look for Studio CNC. Um, and we're also, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, Strange Cures, we'll put that up. We'll put all the other book suggestions up on our Instagram page as well. And oh. I'm going to get into it. Oh, hey, look. Look at that. Had a, Ron oh, Lynch. Ron Lynch. Hi, Ron Lynch. Had a great time doing a week. Here, I'll put that up there for you. Yeah. Doing a well, week with Rob at the Magic Castle. Well, Ron Lynch. Time. Hey, Ron. That was that was amazing. We we, we did a conceptual week um, <gasps> called the Ghost of the Castle. Oh and my gosh! To work with somebody like Ron, uh, you know, you want to write something special for the week, and we had some amazing brainstorming and shows and, and hangs and. Oh yeah. man, how fun! Yeah, I'm Magic Castle that. nights are always fun if you can. Yeah, Ron Lynch yeah. has a show that uh, what it's yeah. t tomorrow tomorrow. Yeah. Yep, yeah, you can find that now. It's on now. It's a uh, virtual, but it was. Uh, it's been a. It's been an institution in LA for God, twenty years. I don't know. Has yeah, it been that long. It's close. Something like that. I think. <laughs> Maybe like at least fifteen. Yeah. Um, but uh, and Joe, you guys, thanks for watching too. Numbers out there. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Thirty-five. Eighty-five years. <laughs> it's been here in LA. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Utsler, thanks for making our Friday night fun. We all right, thank you so much for watching. Thanks, but we love yeah. we love all of you. Uh yeah, follow us, subscribe to us, please. Um, and have a wonderful week. We'll see you Monday morning when we do our morning check-in, our Monday morning check-in. And again, if thank you. To, if we remember. <laughs> thanks again to Rob for joining us. Thank you. All right. Bye. Good night, everybody. And we're keep smiling. <laughs>